I run a fiction editing service through my website, so I see all kinds of stories by all kinds of writers. A lot of the errors that I spot are in dialogue, and most of them are really easy ones to make. We're all human, I make these mistakes myself. Luckily, they're fixable. So in this video, I'll give you both what the mistakes are and how to fix them, and I'll use some example dialogue to demonstrate my points. If this is the first video of mine you've seen, welcome. I'm Kieran, I make videos supporting and encouraging writers to tell their stories and to have fun while they're doing it. And before I get started, I wanted to say a big thanks to Millanote for sponsoring this video, more about that in a little while. Now, to me, there's nothing that breaks a reader's immersion and their belief in your story and your characters quite as quickly as bad dialogue. So I'm gonna take some made up dialogue, identify why I think it could be better, and then take it through five steps until it's more realistic and more immersive. Step one is the baseline dialogue. Then we'll make the dialogue a bit less formal and more human. Next, we'll give the characters a bit more personality. After that, we'll add some movement to the scene and bring it to life. Then finally, we'll make sure the tone and pace of the dialogue matches the scene and we'll add a bit of emotion to it. And by the way, you don't have to take those steps in exactly that order, and this is all just what works for me. I'm sure there are way more elements that go towards crafting great dialogue, and if you can think of them, put them in the comments down below to help other writers. But I think these five steps are a good, accessible place to start. Here's the backstory for my made-up dialogue. There's been an armed robbery. A lone police officer is the first on the scene. The thief's already fled, long gone, but the shop owner knows which way they went. We'll start with some baseline dialogue and then we can apply some more steps to it. So here it is at step one. You are certain the suspect went north? I am sure he did, he went up that street. Was he carrying a weapon? Yes, he had a shotgun. Lock the doors, I'm going after him. Do you really think that is a good idea? All right, so let's keep this up on the screen and talk through it for a moment. I know it seems wooden and stiff, but I do see this kind of formal dialogue writing fairly often in my editing work. Grammatically, this dialogue is fine. It makes sense, it's clear, it moves the story along, it's functional, which I think is why dialogue like this often slips through the net. But does it actually do what dialogue is supposed to do? Does it mimic a real conversation? Does it make us believe that this is two people talking to each other. I don't think it does. The first improvement we can make to this dialogue is a really simple one, and that's actually to make it a little bit less perfect. You probably noticed, but as it stands, this is kind of robotic sounding dialogue. Books are about times of drama and action and emotion, and in real life, during times like those, people don't often speak in perfect sentences. Instead, they're more focused on getting their points across and communicating. So instead of these perfectly formed sentences, I think we should take shortcuts to make it seem less formal. A very simple way to make dialogue sound more human straight away is to use contractions. I have a working theory that a lot of new writers don't use contractions because they've been told in school or in college not to use them because they're informal, or they've read a lot of older stories or classic novels where there weren't any. But today, very few people speak without contractions, so what's on the page should, in my opinion, reflect how the vast majority of people speak. To see the difference it makes, let's just add contractions here so that this becomes this, which is step two. You're certain the suspect went north? I'm sure he did. He went up that street. Was he carrying a weapon? Yes, he had a shotgun. Lock the doors. I'm going after him. Do you really think that's a good idea? This hasn't made a fundamental difference to the dialogue but it has made it feel a little more loose and a little closer to reality already. The scene feels a bit more casual in tone now, instead of feeling so stiff and proper, not to mention this was really, really easy to implement. That's a good start, but to go a bit further, we need to add a bit more character to the dialogue. In reality, people speak differently from each other. We should be aiming to write people, not just characters. They should show their personalities when they talk, not just, you know, move the plot along. Characters shouldn't be just vessels to carry words. They should be as close to real people as we can make them, and how they speak is a big part of that. A common issue I see in my editing is that dialogue can often sound indistinguishable between characters. The language can be a bit generic, for sure, but it can also be that how they say things is the same. One way to make your characters' voices different from each other is to think about all the things that might affect how they sound. Where are they from? How old are they? How smart are they? Who are they with? What do they want? There's almost endless questions that you can ask. 
obviously that's a lot of information to hold in your mind. It's a lot of information to even figure out to start with. And if you're thinking, how am I supposed to know all of that? I haven't even thought about any of it. I've got a solution for you. This is where the video sponsor Milanote comes in. If you're not familiar, Milanote is a tool for making creative projects easier to manage. It functions like a kind of digital corkboard to which you can add labels, images, videos, any way that you want. Within Milanote, there's a catalog of template boards designed specifically for writers, one of which is gonna come in really useful here. It's the character profile template. In my last video, I showed you how Milanote helped me bring a story of mine called Interlopers Back From The Dead, and I've made a profile here for one of the characters in that story, Chili. I've added his basic info, his background, character quirks, and even an arc, which is really useful. Having a place to store this information really helps me to solidify those details and to imagine how all of these things might affect the way my character sounds in dialogue. That's just one of the ways I find Milanote useful in my writing process. So check out Milanote for free with no time limit at the link in the description and a huge thanks again to them for sponsoring the video. All right, so if we can use a character profile to give us more to go off in terms of how our character should sound, we can then add a bit more personality to our dialogue. We're gonna add more emotion to it a little later on. So for now, we just need to concentrate on making the officer and the shop owner feel a little bit more human if we can. So how about this for step three? North, right, you're sure? I'm sure, yeah, he went up that way and he was armed. Yeah, he had this huge shotgun. All right, lock the doors behind me, I'm going after him. Really, you think that's a good idea? Again, small differences here, not fundamental ones, but when you compare with the previous version, there's definitely a difference in how both characters speak now. There's a little more humanity in each of them. The officer speaks in very short sentences, mainly questions. The shop owner is a bit more loose and wordy, slightly less in control. It's a start. It does still feel a little bit flat though, doesn't it? Half of that I think is the lack of emotion in their voices, and we'll come to that soon. But first of all, to combat that flat, grayness. Let's shake things up a bit with some movement. When people speak to each other, it's not all about what we say. The words and sounds are only one part of it. What this scene is missing is a bit of body language, a little physical context that helps support what's being said. Adding this stuff in makes dialogue a bit more interesting, but it also has the added benefit of creating more of a visual scene for a reader to imagine. This makes the conversation feel a little bit more immersive, the movement that we add in doesn't have to be huge, dramatic theatre moves either. It can be small, simple things, tiny gestures and subtle indications. Let's look at the scene again and this time add some movement to it and see what difference it makes. Pay attention to how you visualise the story in your mind this time. Is it different than before? Here's step four. North, right? You sure? I'm sure, yeah. He went up that way. The shop owner crossed to the window and pointed out down the street. The officer leaned close to the glass before turning back. And he was armed? Yeah, he had this huge shotgun. All right, lock these doors behind me. I'm going after him. Really? You think that's a good idea? So the image that conversation brings to mind probably feels a little bit different now, even though the spoken words are almost exactly the same. We've got a little physical description of the room there, of course, mainly the window, but we're also seeing how the characters are moving. This gives us a bit of context to support what's being said. And to me, there's a huge difference between this and he was armed and this and he was armed. If we excuse my terrible acting, the second one carries more caution and more trepidation with it. The words and the gesture work together to create that meaning. There was another change in there too. Maybe you spotted it. There was movement in the language itself that wasn't there before. In the previous version, the officer said, lock the doors behind me. And this time they said, lock these doors behind me. A really tiny change, but one that brings the reader closer to the scene. The dialogue's gone from mentioning general doors without a specific location or description to these doors, as though they're much closer to the two characters in the room with them. Not only is that a subtle and really easy bit of movement to add in, it's also more realistic. If an object is in the room with someone, they're far more likely to say this box and refer directly to it than say the box most of the time, I think. So overall, I think we're almost there. We've definitely got the framework of better dialogue set up now. The last part, I think, is where it's all gonna come together. It's time to add arguably the most important part to this dialogue, which is 
emotion. The emotion of the characters, of course, we need to account for how they would feel in this situation. But also the wider emotion of the scene. We need to make sure that the contents of the conversation, the tone of it and the pace all matches. The place to start is just to take a second and think back to what we know about the characters. How are they likely to feel and how would that come out through what they say? The police officer, I think, would be nervous. They're by themselves, after all, and facing an armed criminal. But they're also duty-bound, alert, efficient. They'd ask a lot of questions because that combines the nerves and also their assessment of the situation and their attempts to control it. There'd be some authority in their tone as well, I think. We've already seen it a little bit in the instruction to lock the doors. Then the shop owner. They're most definitely going to be a bit more shook up, in a state of panic and maybe a little over eager to help, also maybe full of adrenaline. They've just been robbed after all. I think we can use questions to show their nerves and their panic as well, a little over explanation maybe for the over eagerness to help and perhaps some more animated moments to show that adrenaline rush. But beyond the emotions of the characters, we should also think about how the scene itself should feel. What's the scenario? What kind of tone should there be? How would the room feel? What kind of atmosphere would it have? The pace is going to be quite quick, I think, to mimic the emergency situation of the scene. We can use shorter sentences for that, I think, and a lot of back and forth between the two characters. We'll keep dialogue tags to a minimum, so we're not holding the reader up too long and slowing things down. The tone, I think, should be one of anticipation. I'd like it to feel as though the thief has just run out of the door, really, as though the situation is far from over. I think that'll come out in the questions and the characters physically moving in the direction that the thief went in, so towards the windows and the street outside. Then the contents of the situation need to make sense, obviously. They have to be logical and help move the scene on as well. I think we have that in how the shop owner sends the officer off in the thief's direction. So let's have a look at the final version before I compare where we started with where we ended up and give you some tips to take away. So here's the final version, step five. North, right? That way? You sure? Pretty sure. He ran past those cars, I think. The shop owner went to the window and pointed out. His hand was shaking and he quickly put it back down. The officer leaned close to the glass before turning back. Right. Did you see what type of gun it was? Shotgun. 12 gauge. Huge. He pointed it right at me, right in my face. Okay. You're okay. Lock these doors. Someone will get here any second to- You're going after him? By yourself? I'm not going to say this is perfect dialogue or anything silly like that. There are always improvements to be made and different ways of doing things. You'd likely approach it differently to me. And that's the great thing about writing. We all get to put our personal stamp on what we write. However, if we compare this version directly with the first one here, we can see that there's quite an improvement between them. There's more personality, more detail, and more character in the second version. The voices are distinct, there's movement, and it feels more realistic. Of course, I'm not suggesting you write five versions of every bit of dialogue in your story. This exercise, I hope, can be a way to help you expand how you think about dialogue so that this will become part of your general approach before you even know it. I've got a practical suggestion for using this in just a second, but let's quickly recap first though. I'll put some tips for each step on the screen, and if you want, you can grab a screenshot at the end if you found this useful. The first time you write the dialogue, just write whatever comes to you. It's important to have a base to build on, and worrying too much if it'll be good will slow you down. Anything you get down will work fine as a base. Then do a quick sweep to make it less perfect, adding contractions and imperfections in what characters say. This will make it feel a little bit more realistic. Next, make the characters' voices distinct from each other. I'd suggest making character profiles. It can really help give you something to draw upon. Add some movement after that so that the scene feels a bit more alive and fluid and so that it feels like the characters are actually there in it. Then finally, make sure your character's tones match their personality and the situation they're in and make sure the content of the conversation and the pace matches the scenario. If you want to take a screenshot, I'll leave this up for a few seconds. You can of course do these in any order you want or add entirely new steps of your own. The right way is what works for you. What I'd suggest doing with this is taking some dialogue you already have and going through this process with it step by step. See what parts of it work for you and see what doesn't work, then whatever's useful, just carry that forward. Once you do this a few times, it'll hopefully start to become part of your natural dialogue writing process. Thanks again to Milano, and don't forget to check it out at the link in the description. And if you wanna see how Milano helped me save a story that I would have lost without it, watch this video next. Thank you so much for watching, as always, and happy writing.